What's going on folks and welcome to Stu's Garage. Uh, today we're going to be tackling the master cylinder upgrade and uh, for those of you all who are following the build this is the last thing that I have to do before I put the engine in. Um, I literally cannot do anything else to the car at this point until I do this because this is what's holding up the show. Okay so the reason I need to be doing this is because um, if you remember a few videos back we went and we upgraded to the 13 inch brakes with the Cobra calipers and um, while it's not required to upgrade your e-brake it's highly encouraged um, i did intend on leaving this thing the way god made it and just leave the uh, fox body master cylinder in there uh, but uh, some of the challenges that you're going to face with that is that this master cylinder is really too small to push these brakes what's going to happen is you're going to get a squishy pedal feel and there's going to be very little distance between, uh, you know, just putting on brakes normally and actually locking your brakes up. It's really easy to lock your brakes up when you have a master cylinder that's too small. And driving the car, if it's not already sketchy enough, holding a Fox body, it becomes even sketchier. So uh, what I've done here is uh, the, make, the brake master cylinder that I've chosen. Um, a lot of people would go with a Cobra master cylinder, which has a one inch bore. Uh, I don't remember the size of that one. Um, I went with a 95 GT cylinder, which is the largest one that you can get, and it has a 1 in 1 16 inch bore. Um, I'm not going to go through all of the master cylinders that you can mix and match with these cars, um, but I will put a link there that tells you your options and the sizes and things like that. This isn't necessarily a straightforward direct swap. There's a couple of things that you have to do even though this does bolt up. As you can see here, this has two ports on it. And for some odd reason, the Fox Body Master Cylinder has three ports. Um, so one goes to the proportioning valve down here, and one goes directly to the driver's side brake line, which is strange. So um, in order to overcome this, uh, you can buy a brake line adapter kit, which I had purchased over a week and a half ago, and it didn't ship, which is really frustrating and disappointing to me. Um, I ordered that kit because you guys know how much I hate flaring brake lines and making brake lines and finding fittings and things like that. But at this point, um, I've taken a look at it. It's definitely within my capabilities. And, uh, you know, one of the things I like to show you guys on this channel is that you don't always have to go out and buy high dollar parts. Um, that brake line adapter kit is about $50. I can actually go back and I can make that kit for probably about $15. So I like showing you guys ways to save money and make stuff that is just as good as the stuff that you're going to buy. So uh, what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to go ahead and snatch out that stock master cylinder and we're going to start putting in the uh, new larger master cylinder. So most of you guys aren't lucky enough to do this with your motor out. When you look down in there you're going to see it's going to be a pretty tight spot but you can definitely do it. Um, I just don't want to be doing it with a motor in there. So um, in order to get this master cylinder out, uh, this line here actually uh, came loose really easily. This one here uh, wants to turn into clay, it's really soft. So uh, luckily that portion right there is not going to get reused and I'm hoping that I'm going to have luck over on this side down here in a proportioning valve. So I'm going to take that one loose and then the one down here on the bottom I haven't even messed with yet. I'm hoping that comes off easily. And then you've got one bolt here and you've got one directly on the other side. So we're going to go ahead and undo all of those bolts. Hopefully all of these lines come off easily and then we can continue to move on. All right, took a little bit of elbow grease, but actually I was lucky enough to get this thing moving. So this is going to slip right out of here. And I'm not even worried about these bolts right here because they're large enough. They don't look extra corroded. They're going to pop out. and. I don't know what this orange stuff is here, but it's definitely not rust because I'm not dealing with any more rust right now. Okay, I went ahead and grabbed myself a shop towel just to cut down on uh, brake fluid running all over the place because uh, like I've said before in previous videos, brake fluid is nasty stuff and you just don't want that dripping, um, especially on your paint. You know, after I did this awesome paint job on my engine bay, I just don't want it getting on there and just on other things, you know, my brand new. Maximum Motorsports K-member. I don't want brake fluid getting on stuff. So just trying to keep this as clean as possible. And once I get this line free, I'm just going to bend it straight up just so that the brake fluid is not coming out. All right, we got the line loose. So I'm just going to pop this thing out. 
and like I said, I can go ahead and bend this out of the way because we're not going to be using this anymore. Alright folks, you would think that after all of my years of working on cars, I would know better than to jinx myself by talking about how easy something's going to be before I do it. So, um, I got this bolt loose over here. The one on the other side started stripping. It's a very tight space. I couldn't get it out. So, I ended up pulling off the reservoir so that I can give myself space to hit this bolt on this side with vice grips. Um, and in the process, I made a huge mess. I've got brake fluid everywhere, which absolutely makes me cringe. So I'm going to spend some time cleaning this stuff up, and then I'm going to go and get back at trying to get that bolt off. Alright, so I did my best to clean up the brake fluid, but there's the aftermath. That's what it does to your paint. It just completely strips it off. And so this thing is like down to the bare paint and some bare metal. So anyway, in order for me to get to this bolt over here, that I'm trying to get to, the one that won't come loose, um, there's no way for me to actually get a wrench down on this. I'm gonna have to take off the brake booster. So, the way you get that off is you're gonna come underneath your foot well and to, um, you're gonna follow your brake pedal up. So this is the brake pedal, I know it's blurry in here. You're gonna see this U-shaped bracket that actually goes all the way around. And it's a really tight space, but that's one bolt. Uh, there's another bolt and then there's two above that which I'm not going to be able to get you guys in there to see but I'm going to have to get those loose and then the uh, brake booster should come out. Alright now we've got everything looking presentable again. So, um, so at this point we're getting ready to put our new master cylinder on. I uh, went ahead, I was a little bit hasty in throwing the old one in the trash, but um, you are going to need to take a quick measurement off of this. And um, I've got an ultra cool measuring caliper with this tip at the end that you can put down here and measure. Um, you can measure with a piece of string or a stick or something. So you want to measure the distance between both uh, master cylinders and make sure it's the same. If it's not the same, you're going to have to adjust for the difference of it by this little uh, ball here and that just makes sure that your pedal remains in the same place and that you have uh, the correct amount of pedal travel. So mine is actually dead on so I don't have to adjust anything. So we're going to go ahead and put this master cylinder onto that and we're going to slide that whole unit back into the firewall. Alright folks, so the master cylinder's in here and look what else decided to show up. So this is the brake line adapter that I ordered. Um, like I was saying earlier on in the video, I could have actually made this myself uh, once I looked at everything. The reason I ordered this is because mainly because for one, I hate the flare brake lines. And number two, I was worried that the um, fittings and stuff wouldn't be the same size as what I had. I didn't want to go look in and trying to figure out what fittings to use. Uh, surprise surprise these things are all actually the same size besides this one and this one gets reused anyway so you don't have to worry about it so um, just like I was saying at the beginning of the video you can make this uh, this piece right here is actually just a t-valve it's got a little hole in it so normally you don't see t-valves that look like that I think that hole is just so that you could actually screw it to something but this is not even a valve this is this is just a t-fitting just like what I used on the e-brake um, you can buy this thing off the shelf for like three dollars and this is probably like 50 cents worth of hose and uh, these other lines right here these um, these nuts you know they come in a five pack for like two dollars so you know I spent 50 bucks on this it is what it is I'm gonna use it uh, because I still don't want to flare these lines and it's not worth me shipping back so before I throw this thing on here I just want to explain how this works basically uh, this line right here that normally would stick into the bottom of your master cylinder goes directly to the driver's side front tire and uh, basically it's going to screw into the bottom of this T-valve right here so it's going to sit in here uh, something like this I'm not sure I have to uh, yeah some, something like that but anyways I'll show you in just a second when it's all in there all right here it is all finished um, it went in pretty easily um, the only thing is you just want to make sure that you attach each point before you start to really tighten anything down 
Uh, you may have to take some loose to get other ones to go in because um, you know you really want to take your time with this because it's really easy to cross thread these things in the process because if you don't line them up perfectly it's it's just not going to go in and then, and then if it bites it could bite in the wrong direction and then you end up with a serious issue you really 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 don't want to cross thread any of these so just take your time be careful and uh, get all these things in here tight all right folks so that's it for this install this was the last thing that i have to do uh, before I go ahead and drop the motor in. So the next video you guys see of the Drift Fox, the motor will be going in. Thanks for watching, folks. Catch you guys next time.